why am I wasting my time making YouTube videos when I could be Welcome back to Teresa's Dead. My name is Teresa. I'm very much alive. And with that said, viewer discretion is advised. And thank you to the lovely subscriber that uh, kind of gave me the inspiration for the new intro. So thank you. Um, this is going to be kind of a little bit of a work in progress because I'm just tired of repeating myself. I made uh, so many videos. I'm tired of repeating myself. So um, all I'm just going to say is viewer discretion is advised. That's on you. <laughs> But if you do want to complain, I love the engagement. Okay, so hi, 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 hi. Uh, in today's video, we are going to be doing a good old fashioned try on. Why? Because there are some products that I picked up a while back that I haven't had a chance to use. Plus, I'm a weak bitch. And I went into a Sephora when my mom was here when I was on vacation and I couldn't help myself. And I saw some new products and I had a Rouge Reward burning in my pocket and I just wanted to use it. And I'm glad that I did. Okay, so <laughs> with that said, in today's video, we are going to be talking about the new, well, some of the new products from Naked Sundays, which you can pick it up in Target, along with the lip glaze from House Labs, the new highlighter from Dior, the new Basma blush. I have the bronzer from Glossier. I have two new complexion products. First one is from Ilia. And why is it like that? Is it supposed to be dented like that? I think it is. All right, I hope so. All right, I don't remember it being like that in the store, but okay. <laughs> we have this one, I think it's called like Skin Rewind or Skin Bent, I don't know, what the hell is it called? Skin Rewind Complexion Stick. The new skin tint from Super Goop, and I think I'm forgetting something. I probably am. All right, anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how I created all of this and I just, yeah, today was a very weird video, so I hope you enjoy it. We have so much new it's not even funny. And I'm actually really proud of myself because I picked the majority of this stuff up with a Rouge Reward and a Sephora gift card. So I only really spent like maybe, maybe 50 bucks. That's not bad. Considering the amount of that I got, that's not that bad at all. So let's first start with, let's start with the base. Let's start with the base. We're going to use we, who's we? Just me, it's only me, hi. <laughs> we are going, okay. Who is this we? I am going to go in with, hmm. See, I'm lying to you because there are a couple products that I have used and by a couple, I only mean three. Everything else is in its box, but I want to kind of go in with this one. So this is from Naked Sundays. I recently talked about it in a makeup bingo video. And while my mom was in town, we decided to go to Target because my mom loves to go to Target and because she's not gonna be, you know, uh, being being bullied by her husband to get out of the store because he doesn't want to stand there. So yeah, uh, <laughs> gotta love that in marriage. Anyway, um, my mom is really excited to go to a Target because she gets to peruse the aisles and look at that she's never gonna buy, but then contemplate if she is going to buy it. Love that, <laughs> love that. Anyway, so we're gonna go in with the Naked Sunday uh, Cabana Clear. This is a water gel serum. I'm gonna use this today as me primer. I really, really like Naked Sundays. I wound up actually picking up three of the products when I was in Target. So I got the Cabana Cream Hydrating Sunscreen Moisturizer, as well as the Hydrating Glow Mist. This is the only product I haven't tried yet, but these two I have tried. And I'm only gonna pick one sunscreen today because we're gonna be using this from Super Goop. This is the Protect Tint Daily SPF Tint. This is SPF 50. <laughs> I'm laughing to myself because I got a comment once that was like, I think they meant well. I think they meant well. They seem like they meant well, but it was just worded really kind of funky where it kind of, or maybe it was just how I was reading it, but they, <laughs> they were just like, you've been wearing skin tints. You shouldn't be wearing skin tints because you have bad skin. So you should tell people that you have bad skin before wearing skin tints. Again, don't find the comment or <laughs> whatever. I I think they were coming from a good place. It was just worded in a really weird way that made me go, what, huh? So I guess here I'm letting you know that I have bad skin. <laughs> I have bad skin. Um, And when I say bad skin, actually I think my skin's pretty good. I just have some redness to it. And it's because I'm very fair and I get flushed very easily. If I could stop it, I would, but I can't. It's been like this since I was a kid. It sucks. But anyway, I mentioned this all because skin tints are, you know, definitely lighter coverage options, right? And I, I kind of like them because I have dry skin, right? And because of my dry skin, I don't like putting a lot of heavy 
on top of it. So for me, a skin tint is really nice. And then if I need extra coverage, I pair it with a high coverage concealer because that formula feels incredibly, well, more lightweight to me than a full coverage foundation. So that's what I like to do. And you know, everybody can do whatever the they wanna do. It's not a big deal. But anyway, I just <laughs> thought that was really funny because it's a comment that kind of stuck with me. But any hoosies. So this is the Supergroup Protect Tint Daily SPF Tint. This is actually gonna be the second time I'm wearing it. I tried it initially the other day and I liked it, but I don't know if I love it. Uh, so we're gonna try again today and see if uh, it looks a lot better. What I'm gonna do though first, I'm just gonna throw a little bit, just a little bit of color corrector on. Not too much. Not too much as I paint my whole fucking face, right? Now that I sufficiently camouflaged the shit out of my skin, let's go in with the super goop. So I have this in the shade 14N. Initially, I was gonna go with the lightest shade, but the lightest shade was actually, dare I say, too light for me. So this seems like a much better option. Fingers crossed that I have a better experience than I did the first time. Not to say that it's a shit product, but it wasn't like, I don't know, it just wasn't really sucking on my It's like, <laughs> way that I could describe it. Like I wasn't pleased that much. Like I was like, oh, okay, this is not bad, but it kind of, kind of like glanced over the titty area. Does that make sense? To me it does. All right. So I'm going to use the Ruffer BO2 brush. I'm just going to apply just a little bit as you can see. Ooh, <laughs> I love how it squirts out. And we are just going to stamp it into the skin. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> Oh, okay, I like this a little bit better than I did the first time I used it. And the reason why it didn't initially like wow the fuck out of me, because I felt like it was one of those products that kind of just sat on top of the skin. It looked like wet paint and I didn't love that. This looks a lot better, but for good measures, I am going to go in with a sponge to just press that product in. Again, it's a skin tint. It's not gonna cover up everything, but it covers up a good chunk of shit. And for that, I enjoy it. Just gonna put a little bit more on. Yeah, I like this a lot better. Now granted, it kind of looks a little funny <laughs> on my nose. So I really, really need that sponge to really push in the product, but everywhere else, I enjoy, but listen, force a habit. I'm like going in with a sponge and it's not really taking up too much product, which is good. And this also has SPF 50 in it, as well as the Gabbana Clear. So did I really need all of this SPF? Yes. <laughs> No, I don't, but I mean, yes, look at me, okay? I fucking, I fry in the sun, all right? I'm a vampire. Now, I wanna go in just with a little bit more product. See if I can build it up. Fully knowing that I'm not going to get any sort of like medium coverage, but just to see if I can kinda, you know, cover up some of this redness without it being like too cakey. And I think that did nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what? No, I, I lie, I lie. It actually looks like Gave a little bit more coverage, but eh, nothing to write home about. I think the base looks pretty cute. So I want to now kind of go in with a little bit of this bronzer. So I want to see how this works. So this is from Glossier. This is the Cloud Paint, the Seamless Cheek Color. This is in the shade Sail. Ow, that hurts. I hate, okay. I have a, like a love-hate relationship with Glossier's packaging. This shit, this shit hurts. This little plastic cap. Who is this designed for? Children. That's who. All right, so... I'm gonna take it the back of my hand and I'm just, ew. Okay, that kind of like shits out a little bit. Blech. All right. <laughs> this is the color of it. Again, shade sail. Kind of want to use this brush from e.l.f. This is a complexion duo brush. So we're just gonna, okay. Okay. I wasn't really sure how this product was gonna do with this kind of a brush, but I actually really like it though. Definitely a little bit of product goes a long way. I feel like I gave myself like an instant sunburn. <laughs> I feel like I did a little bit, but all right, let's see. Like, it's not terrible, but like, I don't really understand what the fuck it's doing. <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. It also kind of looks a little splotchy blotchy. I know I have redness in my skin, but like, it's weird, right? Okay, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna keep putting more on. We're gonna keep putting more on. So let's try it on this side. Um, so hi, how are you? I'm doing great. My mom was here for a few days and it was like the much needed break before having to <sighs> not have a proper vacation probably for like the next over a year. There's a, a big project that I'm working on. I don't, by the way, I don't know why I just did that. <laughs> 
you know, I just, I might as well just paint my fucking face with this uh, product. Why not, right? There's this big project that I'm working on and I been told, but not told like kind of more like read between the lines kind of a situation that I'm just going to be very busy and that vacation time is really going to be like looked at if I wanted to take off any vacation time because I'm gonna be needed for this project, which on one hand, it's a really cool project that I feel like will definitely further my career, right? But I don't like that. <laughs> I want to be able to go on vacation and do a lot of fucking fun things. And it's like, no bitch, you fucking can't. So like, that is like, I'm not happy about that, um, but it's a job and um, I gotta do what I gotta do, you know? But it sucks though. But anyway, so I was really looking forward to these few days because I don't know when I'm really gonna have enough time off. Um, I know I'm trying to plan a trip, like a leisure trip, I wanna say, in September to go to New York but I have to go to New York at the end of this month um, into April for a big meet for like something for work. And then that's it. I don't have any other fucking plans. And then when I think of it that way, it, it kind of is depressing. <laughs> it's kind of depressing, but yay. <laughs> yay. So I don't love this bronzer. I'm going to use the same brush without taking any more product to go over that uh, where I put the bronzer because I just don't really like how it looks. It's kind of giving me like a weird kind of a beard situation. I feel like I've looked better. <laughs> I feel like I've definitely looked better. Um, I don't know, there's just something about this bronzer that's just making me look like I really do have sun poisoning. <laughs> gross okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add actually a little bit of the blush first and then we're going to kind of conceal the shit out of the face to try to make it look a little bit I don't know less like uh, episode of botched and we're gonna go from there um, and hope for the best so uh, we're gonna try this blush from Basma which I heard if you like it you get something from Cartier no I'm kidding <laughs> joke it's a joke is it I don't know anyway how the fuck do you open this? I have such a love-hate relationship with this brand. I want to love them because I love their packaging. Oh, you dumb bitch. Okay, I was trying to pull this off. I forgot, you gotta slide it over. And um, I saw this blush and I am a huge, huge fan. Oh, this is not gonna end well for me. Okay, <laughs> fuck. I saw this pink and I was like, I gotta have it. So I don't think this is going to be the best way that this is going to show up considering my face looks really fucking like a pizza pie right now. Um, <laughs> but we're going to soldier on. I really fucking hate this. Just looks so like uneven. So I'm going to, I'm gonna use this brush from Singe Beauty. This is the F01 and let's hope. Again, biggest fear, it's not gonna show up. Oh, oh no, it does. It does. Oh. <laughs> What am I doing? Oh, fuck. I mean, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I just don't think that this was probably the best color. Uh, yeah, hmm, yeah, no. All right, let's try that, let's try that again. Oh, oh, okay. The fucking lollipop guild, what is this? What is this? Do you see it? Do you see it? They took a sponge, right? to kind of just, you know, press in the product into the skin. But I think what it did, I don't think it did anything. <laughs> I think it just kind of neutralized. I think it kind of neutralized this one part of my face. And now I just gotta live with it. I just gotta live with it. What the fuck is this fucking pro? Oh my, <sighs> you know what? I should have known, you should have known, should have known. But I get swayed, I get swayed with pretty packaging every fucking time. And granted, maybe it's the color that I chose and which I mean, in theory, I feel like this should be good for me. Let me see if I can just add, <laughs> just keep adding more, more and more. I don't know how I feel about that. So I'm like at the, at a crossroads here where, you know, no, you know what it is? You kind of have to build it up. Cause now I see it and I like it. I definitely like it more. It's growing on me. It's growing on me. I think what I don't like is that cloud paint. I think the cloud paint's throwing me off because it's really kind of coming off again, like I'm sick, like something's wrong with me. But I think that this might be a little bit better though. But it's one of those products that you kind of have to go in a few times. I mean, I still look, I still look fucking crazy. <laughs> 
But I mean, it's a vast improvement. It's a vast improvement from what it was. So before I jump into the highlighter, I am going to use this product from Ilia. So this one came out and this is the Skin Rewind and Complexion Stick. It's technically a foundation and a concealer. It's anything and everything you want it to be. So we're just gonna kind of use this more as a concealer and see if we can, I don't know, kind of, yeah, cover some fucking spots up. But for shade reference, I have it in the shade, I want to call it salsa, but it's not, balsa. Uh, so it's 2C balsa. And I just, yeah, I just want to cover up just some of this kind of gross shit that I have over here. And I am going to take a small brush, which I love this concealer brush from BK. This is the Nikki LaRose. This is the uh, brush N16. Such a nice concealer brush. Okay, right? Not bad, not bad. I just want to go in with this sponge. It's definitely a very dry, dry formula, uh, which is a little surprising because the other stick products that I have from Ilia have been very creamy, but this doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't feel super creamy. Actually, you know what, let me just use a brush. So I think I'm gonna kind of quit while I'm ahead here because if I keep fucking around my face, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to kind of fuck it up more. So we're gonna kind of keep on, keep it on with this one. The next product I'm gonna use is from Dior. This is the Forever Glow Maximizer. The day that I went to Sephora, I guess this launch, so I was like, ooh, so I got to swatch a couple of them. And the only one <laughs> uh, out of the two that I tried because all the other colors were way too dark, what the only one that actually worked was the pearly one. The other one, I think it was called pink. When I swatched it and then I started to kind of, you know, blend it out in my fingers, it blended out to nothing. And I was like, ooh, for this price, do I want something that just disappears? Fuck no. So I had no choice uh, but to try the pearly one. So we're going to kind of apply it like that the little doe foot and we're just gonna blend it out with the fingy so yeah so it's been really really nice because my mom's been in town but she just went home so bye mom sorry but it was really great seeing her as always and oh look at that fucking glow bitch fuck me sideways that's the alien slut dream that i want and that looks really good so we're gonna do it to the other side now so yeah like i mentioned it was really nice seeing my mom and also nice to just kind of have some time off before i'm gonna be working like a crazy person but I got to do something really, really cool. And I kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit because I think it's just really fucking awesome. Uh, but Alex's friend, who is now my friend, so like, hi. Uh <laughs> He's no longer your friend, it's my friend too. His name is Zach. Zach's background is in TV and film. So he currently, I believe, edits commercials, if I'm not mistaken. But as one of his side projects, essentially him and his friends take one week to create a short film. And the short film, I don't think it could be any longer than five minutes, I think anyway. They choose ideas at random, but they all have to kind of have a similar theme. It's not a similar theme, but it's more like they'll have like two things. So for example, for this particular film, one of the lines is, God's not dead, he's frozen. So each filmmaker has to take that line and incorporate it somehow in each one of their films, right? And I forgot what the other one, there was like two ideas. It was that one and it was something else and I fucking, it is escaping me. But anyway, so how did I get involved? Great question. So <laughs> Alex got a message from Zach and it was like, oh, hey, can Teresa do some voiceover work? And Alex is like, yeah, let me ask her. So he tells me this and we're outside of like a Dutch Bros because you know, like we love our coffee and we're obsessed with Dutch Bros by the way. And if you live near Dutch Bros, I am highly jealous of you. But anyway, we're outside waiting for our drinks at Dutch Bros. And he's like, oh, do you want to be in this movie? And I literally just like whipped my head around. I was like, <laughs> Absolutely, fucking lutely Like, I don't care what I need to do. <laughs> I want to do this, whatever it is, I, I will sign my name away. Because when I was little, all I've ever wanted to do was to be like an actress and I suck. <laughs> So I, you know, never really did anything with it, but I always wanted to do something in this sort of space, right? Um, and yeah, this is my only shot, right? So in my head, I'm just like, oh my God, yes, what do I have to do? So he's like, oh, it's just a voiceover work. You just have like a couple of lines and that's that. And I was like, okay, I don't care what the script is. I'll do whatever you say. <laughs> fine, just sign it, right? So I say sign it. There was no contract, there was no nothing. Like <laughs> I didn't get anything out of doing this other than um, fulfilling the dream of me as a small child. Like <laughs> that's essentially what this is. And then I find out that this short film is a sci-fi based one. And I was like, 
<gasps> fuck, I cannot wait to do this. I'm so excited. I don't care what I'm doing. I'm just happy to be a part of it. So he winds up sending the script and I play Captain Ladart, who is a very stressed out, pissed off captain who just needs to get the job done. And I'm like, wow, that kind of sounds like how I am in real life. So <laughs> I was like, I was born to play this part. And from that moment, I was like, you know what? If this goes somewhere, I'm definitely quitting YouTube. And this is what I'm doing from now on. Why am I wasting my time making YouTube videos when I could be just an actress? <laughs> uh, I realized how fucking crazy this is. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't. But now purposely just saying that, I'm going to title this video, trying new makeup and quitting YouTube. <laughs> and then watch people get mad about it in the comments. And that just, that's why I do this. <laughs> So I am here to let you know this is my last video because now I've been in a small short feature and I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna run to Hollywood with it. But no, I'm all serious though. So this was so much fucking fun to do. It was so cool. I'm just honored and happy to be a part of the process. And I'm gonna link down the video down below. Definitely go check it out. It's cute. It's five minutes. It's cute. It's actually, it's, it's a sci-fi. It's not really cute. It's kind of, it's spooky, um, but it's not like super spooky. And I don't want to ruin it. Anyway, point is, if you are squeamish, don't be, you're fine. There's no blood or anything like that. It's a really cool sci-fi short film. So please go check it out. Again, I'll link it down below. So yeah, I am a star and don't you forget about it. <laughs> Don't you forget about it, but it was just so cool. It was so cool. I had such a fucking blast doing it. And I was like, you know, you know, why am I wasting my time at my nine to five? <laughs> when I could be doing this. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take a little bit of powder and I'm just gonna kind of just put it under my eye. I don't really feel like I need it. It's kind of more of a force of habit, I feel like at this point, but she looks good. She's cute. I like her, I can fuck with her. So now what I'm gonna do is use the eyeshadow palette. So this is from Makeup by Mario and this is the Master Mattes. This is the neutral palette. As you can see, I've kind of used quite a bit of it. And I have to say, this is so much better than the majority of the palettes that I've ever used from the brand. So that's great. The only caveat is, and I don't know why this happens, but I think there is something in the formula that does not like this eye because every time that I have used this palette, I have pretty much cried off a part of the eye look. Um, granted, granted, I have been leaving my house because you know, my mom's here and stuff like that. So that could also have something to do with it because you know, allergies and all that shit. So I don't know, but it was actually right here in the corner of this eye. Again, this side, completely fine. This side, not so much. So we are uh, going to proceed with caution <laughs> today, but we're gonna, we're gonna hope for the best here because I really do like this. But if I continue to have some sort of allergic reaction to it, then I, I can't fucking use it, which sucks. So anyway, we're gonna go in with this shade here, which I feel like it kind of looks like a lighter version of the Jones Road bronzer that I love. It's such a pretty, shade. This palette I find to be incredibly easy to use. I don't experience any sort of kind of like patchy bullshit, which is fucking lovely. And I feel like it actually has pretty decent longevity as I've been out and about in this disgusting bog state. But anyway, oh, you know, I actually have a, a funny... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how funny it is, but um, no, it's pretty fun. Let me tell you a little bit about the adventures that I went on when my mom was here. So one of the things that we wanted to kind of do was uh, go to the Florida mall. And if you've never been to the Florida mall, you should go because they have a store called Gotcha. And basically it's a gotcha pond. And if you don't, and I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So I apologize if I'm not, but essentially it's a, a fucking crane machine. And these particular machines are from Japan and they have, you know, cute little, they have cute little prizes, uh, mostly stuffed animals, but sometimes they have like keychains or you can get like giant anime figures. So like they have, you know, pretty much for those that just love that kind of cute fun shit, right? So we wanted to go there because because one, I really, 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 really just wanted to like just play a fucking crane game. And I kind of wanted to see if I was any good at it because I was kind of certain that I was going to be dog shit. So now I'm gonna go in with uh, this one right here. So it's like the second lightest shade and I'm going to use that uh, to kind of blend out the edges of this first shade that we laid down. Um, but anyway, so I kind of thought we were gonna go there and I was gonna just make Alex uh, <laughs> 
play everything for me and basically win me giant stuffed animals uh, because I thought I was going to suck at it. I should always think of myself highly. <laughs> Because when I tell you that I was the master of this, I was the master of this. And I actually pretty much won on almost every machine that I touch. I don't wanna say that I'm the best at it, but I think I might be the best, and I'm kidding. <laughs> I was actually just really proud of myself because I suck in those situations where it, it's like a time challenge. Oh my God, I get so fucking stressed out that I'm literally like, ah! and I just like, just click a button. Like I just want it to be over because that's how much my anxiety is eating me alive. Not this time. This time I was so strategic. I was like, who the fuck am I? Like somebody possessed me and I was able to get all these cute little friends here, which I will pop in the corner, all my little finds. <laughs> But it was so much fun. So if you were ever in the Central Florida area, please go check that out. It is, it's so good. It's so good. Right, now that we have that shadow laid down, just wanna kind of blend that out just a little bit more. I'm gonna go into this brown right here and kind of put that in the middle of the lid. So anyway, so we did that. And then one of the other things that we decided to do, which was actually really kind of cool, was, by the way, I know I said the middle of the lid and then I kind of went all the way to the outer corner. I don't know, sometimes that shit happens, whatever. <laughs> So we're just gonna do that because I don't wanna do too much. I'm actually gonna be covering that up with the darkest shade. I'm actually gonna be using this brown and then I'm gonna use the black as a liner. So let's put that in the outer corner. Aha, yeah, that's what I want. I really do like how this layers. I think it does a really nice job. It makes me very, very happy. Any whoosies. We wind up also going to this other store called Crazy Hot Buys in Orlando, which we kind of found it by accident because there's another cute store in Orlando called Miniso and there's two of them. There's one in the Florida mall. It's kind of cute. And that was the reason why I wanted to go to the Florida mall is to see that and the gotcha store. I would say skip the Miniso store in the Florida mall because I don't think it's really, I don't know, it's kind of small. Eh, it's okay. I think the one that's really cute is actually like probably five minutes away from the mall. And in that lot, that is where we saw this store called Crazy Hot Buys. And Crazy Hot Buys is essentially, and I've only seen this, I think, pretty much from Sophia Nygaard, but it is one of those like Amazon fulfillment centers. So I guess for things that are overstock or potential returns, they pretty much have all of those products there. And each day the price uh, kind of changes. The first day where they get all of their stock, it's like 20 bucks. And then it kind of drops off to like 15, 10, eight, like it just goes on until the end of the week where I believe it's like $3 and then they restock it again. So of course we got there on the day that they were stocking everything up and it was intense. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking intense because there were so many people that were just looking at all of this just shit that was everywhere, essentially. It is mass fucking chaos when <laughs> you go there because you just have people just picking at things and then like checking their phone to see if it's like a good deal. Like I know a lot of resellers uh, go there, which kind of makes sense why people like had so much shit in their cart. And then like, if I guess if it wasn't profitable, they would kind of like chuck it back into uh, the sea of just random shit. But I mean, there were some like kind of interesting finds. Like I actually found like quite a few different Lego sets, which I'm like, listen, as a Lego person, I fucking, I love that. And then Alex found me this acrylic storage that normally would go for like, I think 35, 40 bucks, got it for $20. So I was like very happy about that. Now granted, not every product was like a complete, like, you know, home run. There was just like a lot of just, just shit, just like garbage shit that you're like, I would not even buy it even if they would give it to me for free. And of course I'm trying to think of like an example of one, but it's escaping me. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, but yeah, like there was some like really cool shit and then really just kind of gross kind of garbage. But in any case, it was just so fascinating to watch people hunt. It was, it was fucking wild. So anyway, so really uh, enjoyed doing that. And I'll leave down like their address down below if you wanna go like check it out if you're ever in the Orlando area. It's definitely worth exploring uh, just to see, one, if you could find anything, but it's good fucking people watching, honestly. It is just so fucking, hilarious just to watch people like, get on tables and just like hunt for things <laughs> like as if it's like a fucking garbage mound. It is wild, fucking wild. But anyway, so we did that. Uh, but the other thing that we wanted to do, well, my mom wanted us to go to is Icon Park. Now Icon Park, if you've never been to Orlando, that's where um, the giant stupid fucking Ferris wheel is. Oh, you know what? I'm like, where did I get all this sparkle from? And I realized the brush that I used, I didn't clean it all that well. So there's fucking sparkle on that. And that's really, that's cool. Cool, thank you. Thank you so much. I love that for me. Motherfucker. All right, hold on. <laughs> I'm actually gonna go in with the lightest shade here. I'm gonna put that 
right in the beginning of my lid. So anyway, so anyway, we go to Icon Park and the only reason why my mom wants to go to Icon Park is because she really just loves, loves a fucking Gordon Ramsay fish and chip shop. And listen, I don't deny my mother anything, whatever she wants. Mama gets. Oh yeah, you see, you see that? Yeah, I think, I think I'm allergic, whatever the fuck it is, because you see, it's like already, oh, damn, this sucks. Cause I really do like this palette, but like I, I can't, oh, you see how it's like getting all wet right there? Oh, I don't know what it is. I don't know why it does that, but it just fucks me up though. It fucks me up. I hate it. Moral of the story is mama gets what mama wants and mama wants fish and chips. We're gonna go get fucking fish and chips. So the problem about this particular place is that everyone that works there, right? They kind of, they're all working for like different things. So they're like small vendors that think about it like a mall, right? Like you kind of have like the hair straightener people, right? Or you have like the fucking sunglass people or some really random ass makeup brand that you've never heard of people that usually go, hi, hi, you wanna come over and see this? Like you have all those people that basically they just need sales and I get it and whatever, but I don't like the ones that do it at Icon Park because they can be a little bit aggressive. They just don't know or they don't understand the word no. So they kind of like follow you for a little bit and you're just like, I said no 75 fucking times. Like, please, can you just get the fuck away from me? Um, But this, this particular thing that is always right outside the fucking parking lot, it's a timeshare company. And the first time that we went there, this one guy was legit arguing with me. Like, you don't want a timeshare? And we're, I was like, I, we, we live here. That's always my answer. Like, well, we live here. I'm like, thank you. I'm all set. And then the guy would follow up with like, but wait a second. Like, you could still have a timeshare though, even if you live here. Not interested. Thank you though. But why not? Everybody wants a timeshare. I don't want one. I don't fucking want a timeshare. Is that, that too much? I don't want one. I don't fucking want a timeshare. You know, you could do so much with the timeshare. Shut the fuck up. That's, <laughs> that's what I need you to do is shut the fuck up. But of course I'm always very polite and I go, no, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But like, I'm, I'm all set. I'm good. Thank you. But no. And so I kind of made a joke with uh, Alex and my mom that I was like, listen, if we have that thing kind of happen again, I'm going to say the first thing that just like comes to my mind and I'm going to try to just try to freak them out as much as I humanly can uh, just to avoid them having to try to sell me a, a fucking timeshare. So my mom is like, all right, like, whatever. You're, I don't believe that you're going to do that. You're probably just going to say no, no, no. And then just like walk really fast. And cause she knows me, like, I, I talk a big game, but like, I, I'm more like, no, it's okay. Bye. <laughs> so of course we get off the elevator and who do we see? We see the lovely timeshare people. And I saw there was like a, a family that was kind of like right near the timeshare person and they kind of stopped for a second, but they kind of quickly like walked away. So at this point, like I don't even have like that buffer um, of anybody to kind of like just slink past. Like we had no choice but to face the timeshare people. So as we were like walking past, this person was like, oh, can I interest you in a timeshare? And I, I said, no, thank you. And they said it again. I said, no, thank you. And they said it one more time. And I just legitimately just said, I eat my own shit. And my mother just went ah, and she just exploded in laughter. Alex was just like, what the fuck is wrong? <laughs> what is wrong with you? And I was like, I don't even know. This person literally just like looked at me and they were like, never mind. So listen, all that to say, if you're ever in a situation, you don't know how many times you've said no and it, you don't want to get to the point where you're cursing someone out because listen, you don't want to do that, right? It's just, it's their job. Just say something to them that will just freak them the fuck out. Like I eat my own shit. And it worked because when we were walking past, when we were walking back after eating from Gordon Ramsay, the timeshare person saw me, got out of their booth and walked around the corner so our paths wouldn't cross. Now I will forever be remembered uh, to that person as someone that eats their own shit, um, but I'm okay with that. That's a story that gets to keep on living. And I like that. <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to kind of go a little bit light on this side only because I have a little bit, you see it's a little, little tearing right there. So we're just going to put a little more on right there. All right, I think this is like as good as I am going to kind of get it. I don't wanna fuck around too much with this eye only for the pure fact that it is already kind of crying a little bit. So I like it, I like it. I don't know if I love everything that I'm doing today, but I just have to keep on keeping on, right? Anyway, so I'm gonna add a little bit of this eyeliner from Melt. And just to make things interesting, I'm gonna take a little bit of the 
Kaltura shade. Let me put that right in the middle. Oh, you know what I wanna do? I wanna take a little bit of this dark brown shade. And I just wanna line a little bit of the lashes like that, just a little bit. I'm gonna take this shade and kinda put it underneath that liner. Okay, and then I'm gonna take probably the second lightest shade. And again, just kinda blend the edges. And I'm going to kinda take this shade and buff it into the shade that I put under my lashes. I forgot I have this product uh, from House Labs and this is the Lip Glaze in the shade Guava. So let's see how this looks. Oh, oh, I like that. Okay, I love this. I just don't love my whole face. <laughs> It. Oh God, and then my eye is kind of tearing up a little bit, so fuck. So this is a completed look. I don't hate it, but I definitely think there are things that I could do differently next time. And yeah, all right, let me kind of explain that. So first and foremost, let me kind of just talk about the products in order of how I use them. Starting off with Naked Sundays, this is great. I really like this product a lot. Like I've mentioned before, I have used these two products. I have been enjoying them thoroughly over the last few days. So if you are looking for a hydrating sunscreen moisturizer that has no color, just makes your skin look dewy, refreshed, and wonderful, this is really good. This is the Cabana Cream, super good. It's a nice hydrating sunscreen, but it's not too hydrating where it looks like you dipped your head in a deep fryer. So. You're good. Then we have this one, which is actually what I have on my face today. This is the Cabana Clear. This is a water gel serum SPF 50. I use this pretty much as a primer. And then I went over it with the super group. Ultimately, I know kind of canceling it out. It's you can't like build up the SPF. It's like whatever's the highest is like the one that's going to live. I think that's how it was explained to me. But anyway, <laughs> so just because I use two products that have SPF 50 on it doesn't mean it's automatically SPF 100. No, it's, it's still SPF 50. So this is going to come in really, really handy with any complexion product that I have that doesn't have SPF in it. Um, but I've just been enjoying this and this is really good. I like the cream. It's very hydrating. It's very comfortable. It doesn't break down my makeup. It has really good longevity. And I feel like my face is just really protected, which is nice because I spent the last few days in the hot sun staring into the sun and I feel like I still look like a ghost and that's all I ever wanted. So we love this. So if you've ever wanted to try the Naked Sundays, um, I say go, go forth my baby, go forth my child. It's available in Target. I, go fucking check it out. I do want to pick up the one product that I did not see in Target. I think it's like Hue Drops or something. It's supposed to have some color to it. I want to try that one next. But if it's anything like the two products that I have tried, I'm going to love it uh, incessantly. So fingers crossed that I do find it. But so far, so good. We're very, very happy. So if you're looking for a nice SPF option that's hydrating without it being just a fucking mess, Look no further. So moving on to the Supergoop protection or protectant or whatever the fuck. I hate I hate when they try to be cute and they say stupid shit like protectant. I hate, oh, I hate it. Anyway, so I have it in the shade of 14 and I think this is the second lightest shade. The first shade was kind of a little bit too light for me. It would probably look better more as a concealer than it would as a foundation. So that's why I decided to choose 14 and I think 14 and is a pretty good fucking match. When I first tried this product, I wasn't like, what did I say before? It wasn't like, like it wasn't like sucking on my it's like <laughs> like it was okay but I felt like it was one of those products that really just sat on the top of my skin and it wasn't until I used a sponge to really kind of press that motherfucker in but once I did I liked it. I just didn't think it was like the most amazing and astonishing fucking thing I've ever used. Now, when I did use it today, I liked it a lot today. I liked it so much more today. And maybe it's because of the technique that I was doing because I was kind of stamping it into my skin as opposed to kind of like dragging it down. So maybe that's what it was. I still don't love how it looks on my nose. So like I needed to use a sponge to really kind of push in the product because for whatever reason, it doesn't like to kind of melt into the skin beautifully. It just kind of sits on top right there. But everywhere else, I felt like I didn't didn't really need a sponge, but I still use a sponge. Why? Because it's just a fucking force of habit at this point. But I like it though. I like it a lot better today. Now, the first time I did wear this though, I have to say it has really good longevity. Now it's not super humid down here, but it is pretty hot. So like if you're in the sun, it feels like it's like fucking 91. But if you're in the breeze, it's like a good like 80, 85. And we were out and about the last few days. So on the day that I did wear this product, I was sweating. I was sweating a little bit. But I'm happy to say that once I kind of like calmed down, I didn't notice like any sort of like weird holes, um, especially around the areas where I sweat the most, which is kind of usually like right around the hairline and just, I don't know, everywhere else. But 
<laughs> but really up here, I kind of like sweat a lot. And usually with foundations, if I'm sweating, I'll notice like coverage missing. I'm very happy to say that that was not the case uh, with this product. You don't need to set this down with powders. So for today's look, I didn't use powder with the exception of like under my eyes, but I have used it with powder. And I feel like it looks pretty, well, I don't wanna say identical because the powder definitely makes it a little bit more of like a natural matte while just using it on its own without powder kind of has a little bit more of like a dewy glow to it. But either way, if you decide not to set it down, it's not sticky. So I don't feel like it's going to be like transferring or anything like that. So so far anyway. But of course, if anything changes, I will leave a pinned comment uh, down below to let you know. But so far, so good. Um, So yeah, so I want to kind of keep playing with this product, but I remember the first Supergroup product that I've ever used that was a complexion one. What was it called? Oh, hold on, I'll show you. So the product that I initially tried from Supergroup was the CC screen. This is a great product. I love it. It's definitely um, more on the full coverage side. So that's the one thing about this. This is a true skin tint. So it's just going to look like your skin, but maybe a little bit better. I do have redness in my skin so I did kind of go over it with a color corrector and I have to say though even with introducing it with the color corrector it did reduce a fair bit of redness but I did see some spots that I wasn't really like super in love with but the reason why I don't kind of gravitate towards and I mentioned this before gravitate towards a lot of full coverage foundations it's because it sometimes just feels so fucking heavy and drying on my skin that I kind of prefer to kind of go in with a skin tint because on some areas of my face I don't really get flushed or annoyed or anything and it looks fine and with a skin tint I think it looks pretty good but then I have you know places like over here where I do have some kind of redness and you know all kinds of other gross shit that kind of peeks through every now and again um so it's kind of nice to pair it with a high coverage concealer so again because it's lightweight I don't feel like I have a bunch of shit on my face um but yeah I would say the biggest difference obviously is that you get a lot more coverage with the CC screen as opposed to this this is truly a pure skin tint I'm gonna continue to play around with this product, but I think this might be one of those things where you should check it out during the Sephora sale. I don't necessarily know if I would pick this up again at full price, but definitely on sale. That's kind of like where I'm leaning towards uh, with this one because I don't know, there was just something about this product that initially when I tried it, I was in love with it. And I was like, oh my God, this is fucking amazing. This, I was like, this is okay, but it wasn't like anything that was like super truly amazing. I still like my skin tints more from Summer Fridays or Westman Atelier. Like I really love those or even the hour glass one uh, which is fucking perfection um I don't know this was this was today was better but it's still it's not the most amazing skin tint that I've ever tried so yeah it's good but I would kind of get this on sale okay so let's move on to the product that I feel like kind of fucked me up and this is from Glossier this is the cloud paint the seamless cheek color I think they're marketing this as a blush but I believe this is supposed to be a bronzer or some shit like that anyway um is it? Hold on. Let me, let me just fact check that motherfucker. No, it is. Okay. It just says blush, but it's a bronzer. Interesting. All right. This kind of came off a little bit too red for my liking where it looked like I had sun poisoning and not like a beautiful kiss of color. So I think this mixed in with the blush right now is kind of giving like this really just weird color that I'm not like fucking in love with. It feels very Pepto-Bismol-y. Mm, not really happy about it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try this again, but I, and maybe I just need to kind of pair this with a different kind of product because I don't know it's just the mixture of these two the two colors which I don't know kind of doesn't make any sense but I don't know I'm just trying to give this product the benefit of the doubt a little bit but I feel like it's just not a color that's going to work for me which is unfortunate but eh not the fucking end of the world. Um, but I want to try it again, but I'm not loving it. I also feel like it was a little fucking patchy in some spots. Maybe it was the brush that I was using. So we're going to try it again, but I don't fucking love it. I don't fucking love it at all. Like I, I want to love it, but mm -mm. so this is a, mm -mm. I would kind of say skip on that one. Moving on to the, uh, Basma blush. Um, yeah, dude, I don't know. Like, this is kind of a weird product. When I first used it, I was like, oh, I don't think it's gonna look really good on me. And I think it's because of the tone of the bronzer. Kind of really kind of gave it like this very funky kind of fucking Pepto-Bismol. Just, I don't know, I look like a lollipop guild. I really didn't love it that much. So it kind of threw me for a loop, but it's one of those products where I kind of need to build it up. And then when I built it up, it looked a lot better. But I want to try this again, except I want to pretty much pair this with no bronzer. I feel like this is going to look a lot better 
without any bronzer on my face. I have a feeling. I don't know why, but like this mixed in with the Glossier, I don't love it, but I think this on its own can look really, really cute. Like just like a nice like baby pink, like a little, like a, an adorable like flush of the cheeks without being like overly fucking red and annoying and sweaty. I think I can get that vibe just using that product. I think it's the bronzer that kind of fucked it up. So it's more of a, let's put a pin in this one. I don't know, like it's not bad. I really do like that it is a hydrating product and it's one of those products where, you know, my hair can kind of like touch it. I don't feel like it's gonna be sticky or anything like that, which is great. But I don't know, I just, again, wanted to like it more. But I will say though, I do like it a lot more than the complexion stick product. So that's good. Um, but I think this is going to look amazing on its own. I just don't think it needs anything else with it. So we are gonna try that again. Moving on to the highlighter. This is great. I really do love this. This is a beautiful glow. And if you are like me, uncooked chicken, you're going to want this one. You're gonna want that pearly one. Don't get the pink one. The pink one fucking blends into nothing. Don't even attempt to try that one. I had such high hopes for that one because I was like, ooh, that's gonna look really good because I do love a good pinky highlighter. Mm -mm -mm. It has to be the white one. It does have a little bit of sparkle to it, but it's not too much where it looks like you fucked a disco ball, so that's good. Uh, but there is a little bit of sparkle though to it. I also really liked how easy this product was to use. I feel like it blended really beautifully into the skin, especially when used with the finger. Um, but yeah, this, is, this was fucking great. So this is something that you should totally pick up during the Sephora sale for sure. Highly recommend that one. Um, and then I did use this stick from Ilia, which I, I have to see, is this stick supposed to be like this? Hold on a second. No, it is. Okay, thank God. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Now it's supposed to have this weird dent in it. Okay. Um, don't love this under, well, I shouldn't say I don't love this under the under eyes because I think it looks it actually doesn't look that bad. I think I'm being a bitch for that one. I think it looks fine, um, but I loved it everywhere else. I think everywhere else, these two together are fucking good. And I really like this product a lot. And I also love this product because it was able to kind of tone down the kind of patchiness of this product. So that is really fucking amazing. Um, but under the eyes, it's definitely more on the drying side, which is something I don't really love because I have dry skin and it's an even drier under eye area. So I needed to just make sure that all of this is just fucking good to go. Um, and I kind of felt like it was okay. It could have been better. However, I did set it with a little bit of powder and I'm not noticing any sort of like signs of like extreme like dryness or settling into fine lines. So maybe it's actually not so bad after all. So I want to use it again, but I have to say like for the fucking remainder of my face, like Ugh, it looks so good. This looks so good. So we're gonna continue to keep playing with it, but I like that one a lot. Then moving on to the eyeshadow palette. So this is, uh... You know what? It's actually not that bad right now. Okay. So this is from Makeup by Mario. This is the Master Mattes, the Neutrals. Um, okay. So I like a fucking, I, this, this palette just, I don't know, put me in a chokehold and I was like, I need to have it. Y'all know me. I'm a basic bitch through and through. So even though I have this palette already, I just needed to kind of try it. And I'm so happy to say that for the most part, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. The problem is that I think I might be having a slight allergic reaction, but today, it's actually not that bad. My inner lid doesn't feel as like moist uh, as it did before. So I'm going to have to keep checking this one out. Um, but I did wear this, like, I, th I want to say like maybe three or four days back to back. And it was always this eye that I would have some sort of fucking reaction to. I would always start to kind of cry in the inner corner. And then by the last day, and it's probably due to the fact that I, I, cause I really don't wear eyeshadow every day. So I'm kind of wondering if that was it. It's because I was wearing too much eyeshadow back to back to back to back. But this corner though was like really kind of red and just not fun. I am going to kind of keep playing with it because Maybe I'm out of the woods. Maybe I'm okay now. Anyway, what I love about this particular palette is how easy it is to use. With the exception of the gray, that is the only shade that I have not touched. Everything else, fucking magical. I think they just all pair together so well. Nothing looks muddy or messy. Everything just kind of builds into this very beautiful gradient. And I just, there is, fucking, I don't know, nothing bad that I can really say other than experiencing that little bit of irritation. Everything else has been fucking wonderful. It has really good longevity. I like this palette because it is just super fast to use, super easy to use, and no matter what color combination that I do dive into, it's always going to look good every fucking time. I didn't experience any sort of like shade lifting or like patchiness or like any blending issues whatsoever. This is great. This is what I've always wanted from Makeup by Mario because it would either shade 
fade lift really horribly or it would be really just not good shimmers and blah 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 like I never found a palette that worked well for me and I think this is finally it so again I'm still going to kind of play with it just a little bit more only because it is kind of concerning the fact that my inner corner does get a little bit irritated and a little bit wet I don't love that so I'm going to monitor that but uh so far so good and again this is something that you don't buy now you buy it on sale so just wait for the Sephora sale. And then last but not least, we have this product from House Labs. This is the lip glaze. I like it. It's nice. I think it's a beautiful color. I have it in the shade Guava. I think it's really cute. Is it the most pigmented? No, not really. I think it would look really good over a lip liner or a nice basic bitch lipstick. But for me, I think this is just going to live in my bag forever and ever and ever because it's one of those colors that I feel like just looks good with everything. So I'm a huge fan, but yeah, so far so good. Now, the only thing that I will say is kind of like, eh, I feel like I have to kind of touch it up a little bit, which is kind of annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Now there is a little bit of a stickiness to it. It's definitely a weighted lip product. So if you don't love something that feels like you have something on your lips, I would kind of steer clear of this. And I guess the sticky factor kind of sucks um, about it as well, but it is a nice hydrating formula, but like, is it the most amazing lip product? Um, no, and I don't know if this is something that I would actually ever pick up again. Like I like it, I like the color of it and all that too, but like, I just don't think there's anything super special with the formula. It's a fine product and that's pretty much it. Like it's not, I don't know, like I'm trying to think like, is this doing anything for me that is just making me go, oh my God, like, yes, I need to buy this in every color. Not really. Like I, when I think about that statement in particular, like I think about certain products from Chantecaille, like their lip chics or the makeup by Mario lipsticks. Like those are products for me are like things that I'm like, okay, like I need it in every color. This is like, it's nice, but I don't love that it's super sticky because they, yeah, if my hair kind of flies into it, I am gonna have product in my hair and that sucks. My hair is like fine to begin with. So now it's just gonna look like a giant clump. Like that's not cute. So yeah, I don't know, it's fine, but I don't think this is like the most amazing thing ever. So mm, if you are gonna pick it up, get it during sale. If not, I think your life will be fine without it. Okay, now I wanna hear from y'all. Let me know down below if you are interested in any of these products or if you're like absolutely the not. Let me know because I love hearing from you. And of course, I want to say thank you to my patrons as well as my YouTube members. Thank you so much for keeping this delicious garbage boat afloat. I love you to pieces. And with that said, I'll see you mother next time. Bye.